Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a low-poly seagull from Daytona, USA. And it is time for episode 14, got it right first time, of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. So today we have one or two things we're going to take care of first, and then we're going to get stuck into exploring the citizen housing complex, the citizen apartments, and the dankies, which are these little houses, I think, which apparently turn people insane, despite the fact that they're far nicer than the apartment complexes. And uh, I wonder if that's a reference to at atomization under, uh, under capitalism, or perhaps the insatiable madness of uh, suburban America, which really is a machine designed to turn people insane. However, that being, if that's the case, it kind of misunderstands the reasons why those things were terrible. And uh, I'll probably ramble about that at some point. But first, I'm going to use fast travel for literally the first time. I know I activated it in the past, but I didn't go anywhere. So where can I take you? Well, we're going to go over to Paradise Gates, because that's going to get access to something. So, when we were here at the very start of the game, we uh, had access to the Paradise Gates themselves, which I think we still can't access, even though we now have one additional uh, code key, the Cosmos. Once again, almost, almost every one of the... Uh, Nightmare computers we found so far has required Cosmos, which means that finding worship has really helped us not at all. Anyway, this is what I wanted to come over here for. We uh, switched off this junction box from the... or switched it on, maybe, <laughs> from the main island, which gets us access to this thing. The Way of Blood Bar. 25th Island Sequence. I like it when islands end. Change is good. Will we have any more change? We're on Perfect 25 now, this'll be the last island. Are you sure? No, being sure about anything is a mistake. You never commit to anything. And you let yourself believe too easily. I wonder- <clears throat> Hair Trigger, a delightful blend that gives you the confidence to do what you always wanted but were too scared to, probably. I could use some of that. What's up there, though? So this is all... this is all mystery. This is all new. I've been wondering what's behind here literally since minute one, but I, I did think there was a nightmare computer, not just a, uh, a switch. Well, I mean, there is a nightmare computer, but it's over there. I was not expecting to gain any access to the rest of the, uh, the... what would you even call this? The Exile Island? This is where the Paradise Gates are, and it's where our Exile Pillar is, but... That's... that's driving me insane. I have no idea what this is. It has a data port though, so Starlight can analyze it. Starlight seems to be having trouble processing this. Encryption detected. Initiating cracking. What the hell is this thing just sitting here for? Cracking. It looks like some kind of audio device. It has a directional speaker that's pointed at Henry's cell. Cracking success. Diagnostic, battery 52%, memory, crystal state, drive, 8 trillion terabytes, recording function enabled, playback function enabled, not currently playing, file extension unknown. Device designation, MHI, AAD. Manufacturer, Masahiro Heavy Industries. Syndicate patent, a device that directs oral frequencies at target, for use in riot control and wartime operations. Foreign modification detected. Crystal state drive added. Processing data type. Scanning records. Match found. Island sequence 15. Discovery of desk room trauma by Dr. Doom Jazz. Data type in device memory matches report 722-633-434-9643. Author Dr. Doom Jazz. Title Psychic Death Scream Trauma. So this is an oral attack device made by Masahiro Heavy Industries. It directs focus sound at a target in a narrow cone. Essentially an audio sniper rifle. So far, so normal. But a modification has been done to the device. It plays a file type that Starlight doesn't recognize. The closest match to the data is a report about psychic death scream trauma that Doom Jazz filed on Island 15. Why does Paradise always have to be so strange? I should speak to the doctor. 
That is weird. I mean, the doctor said that, um... Witness has been able to hear psychic death screams on the island pretty much constantly, and that this has been a, a serious problem for him, so... Perhaps someone has been... Oh shit, hang on, what if he, what if he's... Okay, so... I've been suspecting the whole time that uh, Henry Division was, was, was either set up and someone else did the murder and is pinning it on him, or was effectively turned into a weapon with which this murder could instant could in fact be done so if that's the case this is almost certainly a tool by which that was done right um have they been feeding the demon that was in henry division maybe by pointing this audio device at his cell or um and and has maybe witness has been picking up on that maybe he's been hearing it from the other side of of the island Zealous carving, a carving from the birth of Syndicate. Citizens worship, the Syndicate worship, and the gods gorge on the psychic energy. Yeah. Extremely suspicious, and very interesting. Might as well check if there's anything else down here before I try and climb back up again. This is fascinating, um, but once again, this is a whole other deal than I was expecting to have to deal with today. Um, I could put a pin in this and come back later. But I'm just intrigued. Surely no one's ever supposed to be here, right? This is the Exile Island. <laughs> nice to see that my Xbox controller is still busted up. I've got three and they're all broken in different ways. This one's got the shoulder buffers broken. The other ones are, like, broken... Uh, directional sticks and so on. It's a huge pain in the ass. If you feel like donating to my Patreon or my coffee, you may enable me to get a better controller that will allow me to not stop and start constantly. Um, but yeah, that's that's my one plug per like six or seven episodes or whatever. So yeah, if you feel like it, make sure you uh, kick me back a little something for the entertainment I provide. And um, what the f- oh, that's the other- <laughs> right, I've gone in a circle, that's the- uh, that's the island. <laughs> I thought I discovered a whole second island for a moment there. But yeah, also don't forget to like and subscribe, all that call to action stuff that everybody insists you have to do on YouTube and that I f frankly can't stand. But yeah, so the plot thickens. Um, it looks like there's nothing else hidden over here. Unless there's maybe some stuff up top. I think I'll- I think I'm gonna finish exploring this place just because that way I won't have to come back again, and it's a pain. Everywhere else can be reached on the foot, but there's no way to get here without having Lydia fly us over. And um, let's not forget Lydia is one of my prime suspects currently. I don't see anything else over here. I'm surprised that there's no Shinji's around. Maybe Shinji is only on the main island and... I won't run into him anywhere that's not on the, the main central island. After all, there weren't any Shinjis in uh, in the dead zone, I don't think. Which is on the main island, but is also supposedly... Actually, no, I mean, some human people figured out how to get in there, so I, don't, I suspect there's not kind of any mystical prevention from, from getting into that. It is behind the Paradise Gates. Actually, there's something that this is a good opportunity to talk about, which I, I've been meaning to talk about for a while, which is that um, for a game that is so focused on its music and so dedicated to the music in it, it doesn't really use its music effectively in any way. Generally speaking, games love to ape film. Like, the ah. medium that has the biggest influence on the games industry as a whole is uh, is the film industry. As soon as games started trying to do stuff in 3D, and even long before then, um, the references and stylistic what? techniques taken, uh, ideas about framing and how you transmit a story, all of this is, is borrowed directly from, from film as an art form. Which is fine, it makes sense. They are probably the closest together in terms of art forms. Um, Considering it's all to do with uh, with image and motion and 
storytelling through that uh, as a whole. But, um, you know, the purpose of music in a film is to reinforce what the film is trying to do. The score of a film is there to help you understand what you're supposed to be feeling as a viewer or to undercut that for, you know, a similar artistic purpose. So the score can be used to, you know, indicate that something is wrong, even though everything in the scene is fine. Or simply just to underscore the emotional beats of a scene, to, to reinforce what the, the, the work of art is trying to tell you. But all of the music in this game is provided essentially as a mixtape. You start out with, I think, two or three songs, and you unlock more as you go along, and they are shuffled pretty much randomly. There is no way for the game designer to tell what song is going to be playing during any particular emotional beat of the story. <clears throat> Which means that, essentially, the, ex the musical experience of playing this game is the same as if you were playing any other game with, you know, your media player on shuffle in the background, which is not something I tend to do in games that are narrative experiences. I'll, I'll do that in a game that's, you know, a creative building game or a something like an RTS where there is no there is no emotional impact to the music in what I'm doing, or at least generally speaking isn't. So I think it's a real missed trick that they've that they've not really bothered to attempt to include any kind of system for that. After all, um, many of the many of the best games have soundtracks that are deployed strategically in order to, you know, make emotional points or to underscore or reinforce or intentionally subvert uh, the events that we're observing, you know? There's many criticisms to be made of the Halo games, but they had a really good soundtrack, and one of the reasons their soundtrack was so good was because it was deployed effectively as a part of a of an artistic whole. Um, in order to create a mood and a feeling, and um, I wonder if is he in multiple places at once, or is he moving really fast from place to place? I've seen multiple of him in position in the same in the same frame before, but anyway, um, I do think it's a real a real missed trick, potentially a big mistake that they have not uh, attempted to blend their their thing because. If this was a more of a mixtape of a game, that wouldn't bother me at all. I've played a lot of, um, I mean, we generally call them walking simulators, but um, artsy art games, you know, um, that are more about an experience and a narrative than about having any kind of real game system present. And in, um, in those games, it would be entirely appropriate to have essentially you know, a mixtape. This game, ex if this game exists to showcase its music, then it would be completely reasonable for that music to simply be a shuffle of places that you're going through. Um, but that's not what they've made. What they've made is a strong, na strongly narrative game with specific emotional beats that you're supposed to encounter, and um, those emotional beats can be completely undermined by the by the simple chance of whatever the shuffle happens to be playing in the background uh, at any given moment. And I just I think that's a mistake, artistically speaking. Anyway, I uh, I spent about five times as many words as was necessary to say that, so I hope you're all happy. Um, my incisive criticism and commentary does come at a cost, and that cost is a lengthy runtime. Anyway, I'm going to activate this real quick. Unlocked. Hollowed bamboo. A mass of mutilated flesh was once found in a bamboo forest. Overnight it reformed into a many-headed goat. It was praised and worshipped. Is that the origin of the, the midnight goat or whatever whatever my god's name is? Anyway, all of that said, I do love the music in this game. Most of the tracks are extremely vibesy, and they match the tone of the island itself extremely well. Um, the flaw is that it feels almost like there are two things going on. There is the there is the character-led drama of these groups of people who are all lying about one another constantly and all the terrible things that are going on. And simultaneously, there is the island itself and exploring the island. And I don't think that these two these two 
fields of, of the game gel particularly well. Um, the music absolutely gels perfectly with the island exploration aspect, but at, fundamentally undermines the narrative components. The Dead Zone holds many secrets. Look at the scavengers above it. They feed off things that some do not want seen. It's a good place to hide something. You bet it is, Love Dice. You bet it is. There's some shit in there, all right. See ya. Well, I mean, I've already been through this place and seen it. I mean, cosmos and pyramids, that's no good to me. So once again, completely unable to head through there. I, I, I'm starting to wonder if I'm ever going to find a computer that doesn't need the cosmos key. Maybe that's the one that um, Crimson Acid will give me. Anyway, I should probably get into a systematic search of this place, which should be relatively easy. Rummage my way through the many relics left behind by people who really have no choice to be here, and yet they found meaning in their lives anyway. Relic obtained. Glittering Sequin Ward. A strange folklore developed amongst citizens, believing that scattering sequins outside their home would ward off demons. You see, people find... The fact that we find knickknacks and doodads and little bits of stuff indicates that these people found meaning in their lives. They didn't want to be here, but now that they are, they have to make the best of it. Which itself ties into the extremely clumsy capitalism is bad metaphor, which is not to say that capitalism is not bad, as I hope I've made clear over the course of this series, because capitalism sucks immensely. Shameful fake golden crown. Someone used the black market for status. Foolish. Reprisals are often deadly. How cryptic. I wonder what that actually means in context. I assume we'll find out eventually. But yeah. Um... Clever writing this game is not. It's very fun. And I'm enjoying the moment-to-moment -moment experience of it. And I'm looking forward to finding out all of the secrets that there are to find but I, I do think it's somewhat lacking. And um, more importantly, it still feels like it was written by people who think it's smarter than it is, and therefore presumably think they're smarter than they are. Uh, which is very easy for me to say dismissively as a critic, but um, I was initially hoping that essentially um, I would be tricked that things would seem obvious to me at the start and then become complicated and then as I understand those things they would become further complicated but so far I don't think I'm really wrong about anything like I kind of get this society I kind of get what's going on I, I I'm even not that much in the dark about the the plot at the center of things you know I have a couple working theories and they all have lots of evidence you met that Yuri creep yet he seems like a bad time a real bad time Spineless, though, you know, Chief? Like, could that sack of shit actually kill the council? He's got a secret, though, you can tell. <sighs> Everyone here has a secret. Don't get smart with me, love dies. I can't help it. It's, uh... A brain defect. Not dissimilar to my inability to platform, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on that rooftop if it's the last thing I do. Which hopefully it will, in fact, not be. There we go. Popping a squat on the table. Can I ask you a personal question? It's been a while since I felt this particular kind of stomach churning dread. Where did you take a dump in the idle lands? I didn't see a toilet up there. You don't need to. It's a special, wonderful kind of punishment. You get put in a kind of suspended animation where certain bodily functions aren't needed, but you are still fully conscious. So you were forced to have eternal solitude without even the luxury of a good bathroom break. And I hate the syndicate. Well, I'll give it this. I wasn't expecting to hear a rumination on the uh, fundamentally satisfying nature of a good shit. Um, not that I would know as an automaton, of course. Did I miss? I think, I think that's everything to find here, except that there was definitely a drinks machine. Which I can always tell due to my extremely strong personal radar for vending machines with horny pictures on the front. It's come in very rarely handy in real life. Especially when feeling thirsty. That's a pun. D1. Relic 
Zero Zero Zero, a fruit-flavoured soft drink. Makes you think of caring for your sick mother and when you went travelling to Egypt with a group of friends. You have done neither of these things. Hmm. Fair enough. Alright, let's have a look at what this little clinic-y looking thing is, and then next time there will be more danky exploration. Island Sequence 15. Montserrat leads us to the real world to reclaim the corpse of Dyer Rose. Tragedy strikes, the god hunters repel us. I'm enjoying the slowly revealed story. Oh, hang on, I just remembered. There was one other... Th oh, something that we did not read. Here we go. Yuri's request to join the council, which we got out of Lydia last episode. Yuri request to join council. Motion JH55962 presented by Yuri Knight. Details. Motion table to the council. Yuri Knight formally requests acceptance into the council. Motion was declined by unanimous vote. Additional note. Yuri Knight became violent and had to be restrained. Yuri Knight threatened leader Montserrat. Yuri Knight was detained and is now under watch. I mean... I mean, that, okay, so that, like, I mean, that's extremely suspicious, really, all things considered. Um, but, like Shinji said, he seems like too much of a weenie to actually, actually do it, you know? But then again, that itself can, uh, lend credence to my still active theory that this is a conspiracy, a conspiracy involving literally all of these goddamn people. I honestly do suspect that it will turn out that almost all of them, if not all of them, had a hand in the destruction of the council, either working together as a, a full-on conspiracy, or, <laughs> amusingly, perhaps there was like four different assassination plots that all happened to go off at the same time. That would delight me if that turned out to be the case. Mysterious Carp. Carps were created by an alien race, and the patterns on their scales can be translated into an esoteric language if you have the correct cipher. Neat. Is that a gachapon? Fashionable Dead Nebula phone charm. The mascot character for Dead Nebula. Kids love him. Oh, he's got a gender. I thought he was just like a space bubble. Now, somewhere around here... Actually, somewhere around here is someone's house that has a fish tank. And I need to find that in order to help a ghost, which, as we've established, is always the morally correct thing to do. Catalyst Touch. A new fragrance from Crimson Acid. Paradise Dreams, which looks like a magazine? I miss convenience stores. I never leave the house anymore. Relic obtained. Unavoidable pain pills. All workers on the island require prescribed pain medication. All goods produced in the farm and deep factory have to be hauled by hand. If it was good enough in ancient Egypt... Huh. Weird. Dog treats. Delicious Dead Nebula branded dog treats. Okay, so that's a key item. Again, this is another aspect of metagaming, which is the fact that this is a key item means I know it will be important later. Um, which means I know I'm going to have to trick a dog at some point. Up to up until now, I've only heard loose mentions of dogs, so I know they exist somewhere. Um, Relic obtained. Idiotic loyalty levels. A poster showing the different tiers of loyalty a customer can achieve with the Second Heaven loyalty card. Wretched CD, a CD containing obnoxiously esoteric music by the embryonic adults. Completely unlistenable. I think it sounds fine. That's probably fine, right? I think it's probably fine. I've read that in the past on a different one. Right, okay, I'm going to assume that this here is uh, the fish tank guy. Hell yeah. Creased employee card. Ezra Albertine, assigned to the reality folding drive power station, found next to a fish tank. Okay, great, so that means that we now have the identity of that one ghost to go, uh, hand in. Relic obtained. Duplicated rotten eggs. Some citizens formed a black market in eggs. They found a way to illegally get large quantities of them to illicitly trade. So does that indicate some kind of a trade with the outside world, the real world, the human world? 
Um, or are they uh, duplicating stuff in here? Because as we've established, this is a real physical world with real physical rules. Um, even if they are altered by the reality folding drive away from those rules of reality, of reality that you or I are familiar with. So, it's curious that there are these references to kind of like video gamey tropes, you know? Item duping glitches and various other things that I can't recall off the top of my head, but uh, we'll come back to later. So, two final things right here. One, we're going to have another bloodletting moment. Relic Nightmare Revival. A carving about the god Nightmare Revival, an esoteric secretive god. The floating goat head rules over a far-flung alien colony of scholars. Good for him. Okay. So these other... These, uh, the worship pyramids seem to be dedicated to the gods in general. These other shrines seem to be dedicated to this god specifically, which, if I remember correctly, is a still living god that is that has some contact in some way. Uh, we found a statue of him that explained who he was ages ago, but I don't remember. So, it seems like the blue crests, all they do is give you a... A gem, which is surprising because there's gems everywhere and they're not hard to find. But we've found two uses for blue crests so far. And both of them just gave us a crystal. By moving stuff around. Anyway, um... That's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll join me again in the future. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching!